fill in the blank, Jen. You're not getting any younger, so stop being your own worst enemy. Stop saying you're going to do this eventually. Stop saying you're not good enough, ready enough, or feeling it enough to go after what it is that you want. It's your birthday, Jen Glantz. Happy birthday to you. Go after the things that you know you were meant to do in this world. You're an April Fool, that's for sure, but there's so many things that you know you're meant for. Stop putting them off. Hey you, yes you. Welcome to the You're Not Getting Any Younger podcast, a podcast for people who want to disrupt their lives for a good reason, to make it count. I'm your host, Jen Glantz. And every week, I'll drop a new episode with stories from real people, just like you, who woke up one morning and decided to make big changes, starting with small things. We'll cover topics like entrepreneurship, love, failure, and self-care. Hey, you're not getting any younger, so let's make this an adventure. Ready? Hey, hey, any youngers, it's me, your host, Jen Glantz, back with another episode of the You're Not Getting Any Younger podcast. Guess what? It's my birthday. Today, April 1st, 2022, marks another year of me being on this planet. And let me tell you, it makes me so happy to share this moment with you, my listener. I know you can't see me and I can't see you, but the fact that you press play on this is not something I ever take for granted. And on a birthday, I celebrate it because it means so much to me to have your support and have your interest in this podcast That's the cool benefit of having a podcast that you do for so many years is that eventually it falls on really big dates. And I'm recording this episode on my birthday, and I'm so excited that you decided to listen to it. Now, I'll tell you the honest truth. I recorded this entire episode about 10 minutes ago, and I lost it all. I accidentally closed out of the recording, and I lost it all. So this is me recording it again, which is okay because even after I finished that recording, I was like, I don't know, maybe there's something missing. So I'm going to do this all over again, which by the way, I feel like is some weird April Fool's Day prank. Am I right? My birthday is on April Fool's Day. I've been dealing with this my entire life. When I was a kid, it hurt even more because I was super sensitive and shy. So when people pulled pranks on me in school or at my birthday parties, I was just so emotional on my birthday. I dreaded it. The biggest prank people played were those candles on your cake that you can't blow out, the trick candles. I mean, that was like the go-to prank for Jen Glance's birthday, and it used to just make me so embarrassed and so sad. When I was in middle school, people would come up to me and be like, my crushes would come up to me and be like, I like you, and then I'd be like, oh my god, and they'd be like, April Fool's Day. So I just had so many weird pranks like that. In high school, when I got my first car, my birthday came around. People did all these weird things to my car, and I was just so embarrassed and angry and mad. And, you know, I, for a while, the fact that my birthday was April Fool's Day was something I dreaded and I didn't appreciate. But that has definitely changed. And I feel like me recording this podcast and it closing out was the only April Fool's Day prank I'm going to deal with today, I hope, and I'm glad that I get to share it with you. I want to talk about birthdays in general and how there's just so much anxiety and emotion and disappointment that surrounds our birthday. For so many years, I viewed my birthday as being a sad occasion, something I wanted to downplay or run away from. I, I sort of dreaded it. A lot of that was because of the April Fool's Day part of my birthday and just always feeling like my birthday was a time when people could prank me and put me down. And later in life, most recently, I had some like really traumatic life occurrences happen on my birthday, ironically, and I don't want to get into them here right now, but really crazy things, like bad things happened on my birthday two years in a row. And after that, after I survived that, I got through that, my entire view and mindset on birthdays completely flipped. And they flipped from me thinking of birthdays as a day where we have to look back at our life and regret so much and fear the fact that we're getting older and be down about that to having this mindset that, oh my God, we're alive. We survived another year and there's so much more in store for us. Birthdays are a chance for us to look at our lives and say, hey, 
we made it. We made it through so much that we deal with on a daily basis and we don't even realize and we made it through so much that we deal with on a yearly basis and we hardly comprehend. And you know what? Birthdays, if anything, are a chance for us to sit down, look at our life and see what we want to change, what we want to do more of, what we want to get out of our life. When else do we do that except maybe before the new year and then that's so clouded with all of these changes and promises, but birthdays aren't to change anything. Birthdays are to wake you up and spin you around and say, yeah, you blow out the candles, you eat your cake, but you better have a game plan because you're not getting any younger and that's okay. It's okay that you're not getting any younger, but it is time to stop with the excuses and the procrastination and these lies that you tell yourself that hold you back. I find myself this week on my birthday just telling myself again and again and again how I, Jen Glantz, am my worst enemy. I'm the worst enemy I have. I don't do things I should do and I do things I shouldn't do and there is nobody to blame but me. So when is that going to stop? Am I going to live another year doing that or am I going to look at myself and say, not this year, Jen, not this year. Perhaps this year could be the year that you do all of the things that you've been putting off and you've been scared of and you have been wasting so much time. So if you couldn't tell by that monologue, my my theory on birthdays has changed and it's more positive. I used to find myself retreating on my birthday, hiding on my birthday, running away from people on my birthday just to sort of survive the day but not this year and not anymore. And I want to talk about two things I did this year on my birthday to take control of the day and make it special for myself. I felt like on most birthdays, I had so much anxiety over how the day was going to go and did I have all these high expectations and was it going to be okay? And this year I vowed that I was going to have a really freaking awesome birthday. And to make sure that I could control that, I had to take control. So At the end of last year, I started planning my birthday extravaganza and I made my first promise to myself, which was on my birthday this year, I was going to take myself on a solo vacation. One of my 2021 goals and a goal this year as travel opens up more is I want to go on more solo trips because I haven't really done that very often. And there is such beauty in going somewhere by yourself and creating your own itinerary and eating dinner by yourself and having your own adventures and laughing at your own jokes by yourself. So I've been trying to do more solo trips and they're really hard for me. I get really sad and emotional, but then I find myself in that location and I feel good. At the end of last year, I promised myself that on my birthday, I was going to take myself on a solo trip to LA. I booked the flight. I booked the hotel. I was going to go half the week solo and then Adam's going to come meet me on my birthday for the next couple of days. Um, But that was something I just had to book and I had to do. And I knew that if I took control, I would have a game plan for my birthday. I would be in a place I wanted to be in and there wouldn't be any question marks surrounding the day. Our birthday can be emotional for so many reasons. And if we're the kind of person who doesn't know what we want on the birthday, we need to take control of the day and do something that we know we're going to enjoy. So without the new year even starting, I said, you know what, I'm booking this. It's going to happen. And that's it. Then the other thing I decided to do for my birthday, since I always feel so guilty inviting people to celebrate with me and like putting people out of like their own life and their schedule on my behalf, like I always feel such guilt about that. That's why I don't really have birthday parties and like I try to spend the day alone because I feel bad being like, hey, can you come like celebrate with me? Or I just feel bad about that. It's the reason why I didn't have a bachelorette party and my friends know this about me. Like to know me is to know that like it takes a lot for me to ask my friends to do anything with me or for me. It's just a thing about being Jen Glantz's friend. So this year I switched it up and I said, you know what? I'm going to plan my own birthday party from start to finish. I'm going to take control of it, do what I want, plan it how I want and have no expectations for it. I just want to have a good time. For some reason, I don't have a reason why, I decided to do a magic-themed birthday party. So I hired a magician, I booked a venue in Brooklyn, I invited like 25 of my New York City friends, I did all the decorations myself, I ordered the food, I paid for this entire birthday party myself. And I wanted to do that because I thought that it showed like a sign of maturity to be able to throw your own party and also like... It put me in control of the driver's seat of this was my occasion. I didn't care about the outcomes. I didn't care if nobody showed up. I didn't care if people didn't have fun. I just wanted to have this party and invite the people I love to celebrate with me. 
And it ended up being so much fun. I created these like love potion bottles that people had that uh, I had love potion. And I had brain potion. And let me tell you, the love potion was gone. No one drank the brain potion, which tells you what people are chasing after in this life. And I hired a magician off the internet who was on America's Got Talent and he was amazing. And I did the most like incredible thing, which is I couldn't figure out what to wear. So I did two outfit changes because why not? Why not? Honestly, why not? And it was such a fun time. And I don't know if I'll throw myself a birthday party every year. It does get expensive and it is a lot, but I just had the best time celebrating my birthday. And that's not something that I've ever really done before. So those were the two things I put in place this year to make something incredible out of a birthday that hasn't been so incredible to me over the years. So there you have it, my friends. I'm coming at you, by the way, from Venice Beach, California, my favorite place in the universe. I'm staying at a hotel called The Kinney, which I've stayed at a million times in my life. And I love it here so much. I like to spend the days in LA. This is like my game plan every day. I wake up in Venice Beach. I walk from Venice Beach to Santa Monica, which is about like two to three miles. I go to this cafe in Santa Monica where I sit and do work and I feel so at home. I used to live here many, many times in my life and I have such great memories in this cafe. And then I walk back, which is another two miles. And just, you know, I, I feel so at home at here and at peace here. And today on my birthday, Adam is here and we're doing our favorite things in LA together. Adam has also lived here in his life with me and without me. He went to college here. So we're spending the day doing our favorite things, which include getting bagels at Bagel Broker, which is the best bagel place in LA, hiking Rungan Canyon, which is something we love, going to dinner tonight at my favorite Italian restaurant where they give you endless garlic knots. They just put the garlic knots on your plate every five minutes. It's amazing. And then going to a comedy show that we used to always go to. And that's how I'm spending my birthday. I'm excited about it. I am not looking like for anything else. I don't want any other surprises. Let the only prank of the day be that I closed out on the podcast I just recorded for you and had to re-record it, but I'm feeling really good. I'm feeling really strong, and I'm feeling confident that I can get out of my own head this year and do the things I've been putting off, and I know that's going to take me a lot of harsh decisions. Like I'm going to have to cut back on things in my life this year to be able to pursue the things I really need to do. But I'm getting ready to do that. And one of those things might have to be this podcast. I don't have any plans on ending this podcast. I might not do it weekly anymore. I might switch to twice a month. I'm not sure. But I'm going to have to sort of make decisions of what to push back a little bit in order to do other things in my life that I've been putting off. I've been putting off finishing a book, writing another book. I've been putting off just so many different things. So bear with me this year, stick with me this year. I promise I'm not ending this podcast. And I just want to let you know, it means so much to me that you are my listener and that you press play on this podcast when there's so many others out there. So thank you so much. And if you're somebody who's having a birthday this year, which all of you are having a birthday this year or early next year, take control of the day, plan your own magic and make it special for yourself. Coming from someone whose birthday is on April Fool's Day, we've had it rough. I've had it extra tough. But I can tell you that surviving through it all has completely changed my mindset on birthdays. And it is now a day that I absolutely adore as long as I remember to create my own magic. Until next week, all my love, Jen Glantz. Hey, you. Thank you for listening to the You're Not Getting Any Younger podcast. There are hundreds of thousands of pods out there. So thank you for listening to this one. You can find the show notes for this week's episode up on our website, anyyounger.com. Subscribe, rate, and review that you're not getting any younger podcasts on iTunes so that other ears around the world can listen to. Oh, and join our secret You're Not Getting Any Younger Facebook group, where over 1,000 people are talking about how to disrupt their lives, for a good reason, to make it count. Until next week, all my love, Jen Glantz.